An antinatural contract is a contract that the parties conclude prior to entering into a marriage. That contract allows the parties to keep their respective estates separate. In other words, if the parties conclude an antinatural contract, the marriage will not be in community of property, it will be out of community of property. There are two types of antinatural contracts. The first is an antinatural contract with the application of the approval system. What that means is that um, the parties' estates remain separate during the subsistence of the marriage, but in the event that the marriage ends, either due to death or divorce, then the accrued value of the respective estates of the parties will be shared equally between the parties. So what that means is with an, an antinatural contract where the accrual system applies, the value of the parties' estates at the beginning of the marriage must be determined. That is called the commencement value. So when the parties conclude the antinatural contract, they are able to state what the commencement value of their respective estate is. So one party, for example, can say, um, in my estate, I've got an immovable property to the value of one million, and I've got shares to the value of X amount. So my commencement value is 1.5 million, for example. And the other party can say, I've got an immovable property of 500,000 euros. So you record the commencement value and the growth of your respective estates during the marriage is called the accrued value of the estate. So in the event of death or divorce, the accrued value uh, of the respective estates will be shared equally. Um, with uh, an intimatural contract with the accrual system, the parties decide which assets will be included and which assets will be excluded. For example, that party with an immovable property of one million can state in the international contract that that property will never form part of the accrual. Meaning, even if at the end of the marriage that house is now worth three million, the spouse is never going to share in the accrued value of that property. It's completely excluded from the from the accrued value of the estate. So that's how an intellectual contract with the appropriate works. The second kind of intellectual contract is an intellectual contract without the application of the approval system. What that means is that the respective estates of the parties remain completely separate during the subsistence of the marriage and even in the event of the marriage terminating by death or divorce, the parties never share in each other's estates. So that one is simple and straightforward. What's yours remains yours and what's mine remains mine. Um, the estates are never shared between the parties. There are several uh, advantages to anti-natural contracts. The first big advantage is that the respective estates of the parties remain separate. So there is no risk of the joint assets of the estate being attached in the event of one party falling into debt. As you will know, in a marriage and community of property, if one party or one spouse falls into debt, then creditors can attach the joint assets of the estate. There is no differentiation as to which spouse owns what. Creditors are free to attach anything that they find in the joint estate. Whereas with, where there's an intellectual contract, if one spouse is indebted and um, assets are to be attached, creditors can only attach assets belonging to the spouse who is in debt. So that's the one advantage of anti having an anti contract. The second advantage is that you do not need your spouse's permission to transact 
and conclude agreements. You are free to buy property or obtain credit without the consent of your spouse. So it gives you freedom in that aspect. The other advantage of having an international contract is that your life will be far less disrupted in the event of death or divorce because your respective estates are distinct from each other. They remain uh, separate. Although in the event of the accrual system, there will still be the question of sharing the accrued value of the estate. But it will be far less disruptive, especially when you have stated the commencement value of your estate or you have specifically excluded certain assets from the accrual. Uh, then the division of the uh, estate will be far less disruptive to your life. No, you do not have to wait for the registration of an internet or contract before you get married. The way the conclusion of an international contract works is that the international contract will be drafted as per the instructions of the parties to be married. The parties will both sign the international contract. The parties will um, at attend before a notary public for the international contract to be neutralized. And thereafter, the international contract will be sent to the court's office to be registered. So you do not have to wait for the international contract to be registered at the police office. Once both parties have appeared before a notary to sign the international contract, uh, then the international contract is, going, is regarded to have been properly concluded and the marriage can, can go ahead. Yes, in the case of a marriage, out of community of property, but with the accrual system, then pension funds will form part of the accrued value of the estate. So um, in the case of divorce, um, the one spouse can claim the accrued value of the pension of the other spouse. So um, whatever the pension value was at the commencement of the marriage, versus the value of the pension fund at the end of the marriage, that accrued amount uh, must be shared equally. It forms part of the accrued value of the estate. Okay,